what is causing these uh, prices. Uh, generally, uh, these prices result from what we call external shocks. External shocks, we are talking about factors that are outside our economy, but they end up affecting uh, what is happening in our country. So these shocks, uh, I'm going to break them down a bit, but generally, these shocks are resulting from the after effects of uh, COVID-19. So when COVID-19 came, that was 2000, um, uh, mid-2020, uh, most of these economies had to close down. They had to cut down on production. And this was as a result of uh, a reduction in demand. They were trying to match uh, the demand that was falling during that period. People were laid off work. Uh, the incomes were not as they used to be, so the demand for most of these products uh, was uh, low compared to what was uh, during the 2019 before COVID. So what uh, these companies chose to do was they were supposed to cut down on production and they also uh, laid off workers. So come uh, 2021, 2022, late 2021 when the vaccination rates were high, uh, the economies world over were opened. So when they were opened, that means there was an increase in aggregate demand. But then at the same time, remember most of these industries had, had, had cut down. So what was happening is there was more demand at that moment, but the production was not yet matching. So production is yet to match demand at that particular period. So this is what has driven most of the prices in most of these countries, because as uh, what is happening now is that demand is picking up, but it's not matching what is being produced by most of these uh, countries. So it will go directly to the other factor uh, that we shall look at is uh, oil. Uh, when you look at oil, if you look at the prices of oil uh, over the years, if you look at, uh, when we are looking at oil, we consider what we call the, we consider Brent crude. Uh, Brent crude is uh, the benchmark we use to consider oil prices in most of these countries. So if you look at the price of Brent crude, uh, prior to COVID, that is prior to 2020, uh, Brent crude averaged at around uh, uh, $70, $70 per barrel. So come in COVID, uh, this uh, Brent crude, uh, if you look at around April 2020, the price of Brent crude fell to the lowest of about uh, $20 per barrel. So this was because uh, demand uh, volumes of exports and imports uh, supply chains were being disrupted. So there was less demand for oil. So uh, oil producers, OPEC, uh, even other countries like Russia decided to cut down on the oil that was sending to the, to the market. So this pushed down the price of oil. So in order for these other countries to maintain the price, they just had to cut down the, the supply. So now come 2021, uh, late 2021, uh, most of the economies were being opened up. So this meant uh, that uh, workers had to be called back to these industries to produce oil because now uh, demand was picking up, movement was picking up. So that means the price of oil which had fallen to the lowest was 18 and it averaged at around 40 during the COVID of uh, 2020. So this price uh, started climbing and by March 2021 it had reached highs of uh, 100 and about 120. So the price of oil, uh, that is all over the world, because this Brent crude is a, a benchmark that is used all over the world. So it had reached the highest of about 120. So now this means that uh, when uh, the price of oil is quite high, that means every other sector in the economy is affected, because oil is uh, basically the engine of the economy. Goods have to be transferred. Uh, ships have to move from one uh, nation, one continent to another, uh, air transportation, then even in production. Uh, most of these companies run on oil in their production process. So when that, this oil is uh, quite expensive, so it will affect all the prices in uh, the economy. So the surge was worsened by uh, the surge. If you look at uh, recently, uh, there was uh, this conflict in, uh, we are having a conflict in Ukraine, that is Ukraine and Russia. So this conflict has further, because speculation, we ex uh, economists are speculating at over uh, the long run, we are going to see shortages of oil. Because much as Russia is not part of OPEC, it's one of the major suppliers of, of oil. So because of this speculation that uh, uh, oil is going to be a bit scarce, so the speculation that it's going to be so high, so it's, going to be, uh, it's not going to be available. So this has also pushed uh, the prices of oil and in tandem has affected the entire, uh, entire economy. 
Then, other than the external shocks, there was uh, a Ugandan incident. Uh, Uganda, uh, starting 2020, uh, when you look at the taxes, there's what we call the compliance gap. So the taxes is what we call value-added tax. So if, uh, Uganda introduced what we call electronic fiscal reporting and invoicing solution. So this means that all, uh, all commodities uh, that are produced all over the country are supposed to be registered and URA is supposed to record all these products. So this implies that uh, there were several traders that were not paying VAT. You get that means they used to evade taxes. So if I used to sell products of uh, one million, let's say within a day, if I'm a supermarket and I used to sell products of one million, uh, that means I tell you are that I've sold products of only two hundred thousand. But because of this system where you are AKM and uh, it requires every VAT registered supplier to record uh, to use this electronic fiscal receipting and invoicing solution. That means all goods are supposed to be charged VAT. So before where a, a, a trader could easily charge you, uh, could charge you, let's say if it was sugar, he could easily charge it to you without charging VAT because then it was cheap. But now, because uh, URA is trying to close this compliance gap, so every, every trader is getting on board, every trader has to pay VAT. So as a result, uh, it has to push the prices slightly above. So before these traders used to evade, uh, traders, you're looking at all traders in uh, wholesalers, you're looking at supermarkets, we're looking at all these big suppliers. So before they could easily sell these goods to you without charging you VAT, but now because you are is trying to close in on these gaps, so as a must they have to charge you VAT and in tandem the price has to be a bit higher. So if I'm to summarize what, I, what is causing these prices, first is after effects of COVID-19, uh, basically where aggregate demand is increasing compared to what it was during the COVID period. Uh, this is also explaining the prices of uh, crude oil. Uh, so these prices of crude oil are also coming from the effects of COVID-19. Uh, then uh, the other effect that we are looking at is basically the conflict in Ukraine. Uh, what is happening because it's causing speculation in regards to the prices in the near future. And then the other, which is domestic, that is not external, is basically the, uh, this uh, compliance gap in relation to uh, value-added tax uh, in uh, the Ugandan ta tax regime. So now the question is, what is government doing? Uh, what has government done? Uh, as of now, government has not done anything significant. Uh, it has, uh, what government has done is uh, continue, because the programs that are being implemented by government uh, in relation to how making sure that people have more money are uh, programs that have been there even before uh, these uh, increasing prices. Because government is saying, uh, uh, putting in place the parish development model where people will have more money and then there, is, there was also a Mioga last year where money was put into people. But in response to these prices, the government uh, hasn't done much. And usually for economists, they say in the short run, uh, government is not supposed to immediately respond. So usually they take some time and over time maybe they'll respond. But for now, they are still within that short run uh, to watch the prices and uh, thereby coming up with a solution on uh, what to do. Uh, but if you had to look at what can government do, what are some of the things that government can do? Uh, one of them is uh, uh, we are looking, th mostly these are fiscal tools. These are fiscal tools. So what government can do, they can reduce prices on some of these uh, core commodities. They can reduce some of the, let's say, import duties on fuel. Uh, they can reduce some of, uh, they can reduce VAT on some of these particular products. So this will somehow push uh, the prices a bit lower only that uh, in tandem it affects uh, government's revenue collection efforts because then government still has to, uh, to pay uh, employees of government, to pay public servants and to supply all these uh, commodities that are public. We're talking about roads uh, and everything else. Uh, the other that government can do is uh, subsidies. Uh, what uh, Kenya has done is, uh, I think they've had it over time uh, from 2011 as we're recovering from uh, 2008, that economic crisis of 2008, uh, they introduced a fuel subsidy whereby they could, depending on the situation, they could come in and subsidize the, the fuel so that the fuel could be given to the people at a relatively uh, lower price. So if government can work on fuel, because fuel generally will affect the entire economy, uh, because almost everything has a connection to fuel. So if they can subsidize fuel, 
all uh, reduce the prices on the fuel, we expect that it will have a, uh, an effect, a smaller effect on the, the prices of, uh, of fuel. Uh, looking at the outlook, looking at the future, uh, it's predicted that things may actually get worse uh, before they actually get uh, get better. Because the outlook for Brent crude uh, over the near uh, the near future, we're looking at about the next six months. We are looking at uh, Brent crude going, moving. Currently, it's uh, still within a hundred. Uh, currently, the price is about a hundred. But in the near future, we expect it to go to highs of 150. That means if now we are buying petrol at 5,300, uh, in the next future, it's going to go to highs of uh, probably 6,500. And this, uh, because uh, the war in Ukraine is actually taking longer than we actually uh, estimated. By the same time, we are still recovering from the effects of COVID-19. So things are actually expected to get worse. Uh, before they get better, but it's expected that maybe by the end of the year, 2022, uh, by then we shall be done with the effects of COVID-19, and now the only issue will be whether the war in Ukraine will still be there, uh, or it will not be there. So